The Federal High Court sitting in Abuja has granted a former governor of Jigawa State Senator Saminu Turaki bail in the sum of 500 million naira with two sureties in like sum who must have a 250 million naira bail bond each. The presiding judge, Justice Namdi Dimba, said the surety should either be a businessman or a civil servant in the level of a director who must have landed property in the Federal Capital Territory. The judge added that the sureties must deposit their evidence of tax payment with the FIRS. Justice Dimba also asked the former governor to deposit his travel documents with the court's registry and that he must report to the headquarters of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission on the first working day of every month. Mr. Turaki, who has rearranged on the 32-count charge of money laundering and abuse of office, has been remanded in the Kujie prison until the bill conditions are perfected. The case has been adjourned until September the 19th for hearing, in line with the first adjournment by the Federal High Court in Lutse, Jigawa State. The former governor was recently arrested at an event in Abuja following a bench warrant issued in 2014 by the Federal High Court in Jigawa to compel him to attend his trial. We took his application for bail and he's been admitted to bail. We're just trying to sort out the condition, then he'll go home. And then the matter is adjourned to 18 September when the trial will commence, God willing. His Lordship entertained the matter, had been the vacation judge for the entire 19 northern states. By the time they resume, the file will be going back to Dusi in Jigawa State. In other legal matters, the Federal High Court sitting in Lagos has ordered the forfeiture for 21 days of Victoria East Park Hotel and Suites located in Ikurudu, Lagos, over alleged fraud of 53.7 million naira. The court made the order after listening to an ex parte application filed before it by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. The EFCC had told the court that it believed that the hotel was acquired with the proceeds of fraud by one Ebiriswa Friedrich, who is alleged to be believed to be the ringleader of a syndicate based in Ibadan with accomplices here in Lagos. The EFCC also told the presiding justice Chuka Obiozo that the anti-graft agency sought to take over the hotel to prevent the alleged fraudsters from disposing of it while investigations are ongoing. The matter has been adjourned to August the 9th, 2017. Now, hate speech has dire consequences for any country striving to build a multicultural society. And for this reason, the National Broadcasting Commission has taken it upon itself to address the issue at a summit in Joss Plateau State on content development and peaceful coexistence. Speakers at the summit identified broadcasting as a major instrument for helping people and communities appreciate the advantages of good neighborliness, values of diversity, as well as mutual respect. Critical stakeholders in the broadcast industry are meeting in Jos, North Central Nigeria, for the 2017 National Broadcast Summit, organized by the National Broadcasting Commission for practitioners in the radio and television stations across the country. The summit's theme, Broadcast Content Development and Peaceful Coexistence, is to emphasize the importance of the broadcast industry's responsibility in assisting the entrenchment of peaceful coexistence in Nigeria. We are all witnesses to the unprecedented output of hate materials, especially on television. It was because of that and the data that hate and dangerous speech portends for the health of society. At the NBC recently commissioned a special study of hate speech in Nigeria, the consequences and how to avoid its future propagation in Nigerian broadcasting, especially during the elections. Delivering the keynote address of the summit, Dr. Tony Radia observed that broadcast and program content in the industry must have elements that reflect the people and their concerns, as well as their community, while innovative and creative programs that will douse tension should be invented. There should be programs that tell the leaders what the people want. There should be caricature programs that protect those who are not doing what we are expecting them to do. At this moment, I'm curious people that when the ombudsman at NBC chooses to deal with this topic, it is 
A cast of panelists have been put together to discuss various topics ranging from analyzing of political determinism in Nigeria's development process, role of broadcasting in peace building, conflict management in prevention, fostering peaceful coexistence through community broadcasting, as well as producing and managing broadcast content in critical times, among others. Meanwhile, the role of the Nigerian media in promoting national development has been a topic of discourse for many years, with experts concluding that capacity building is key to effective media practice. Out to this end, the United States government is partnering with Channels Media Group to enhance local capacity as some Nigerian journalists undergo a one-week training in Abuja. Channels Media Group believes that facilitating the training at its state-of-the-art training center will drive the expected change. Participants gather from different media organizations for a one-week training at the Channels Academy. This is going to be a great one week of training. Channels Management, in partnership with the United States Embassy, welcome media practitioners. On behalf of the Chairman, uh, CEO and Vice Chairman Channels uh, Media Group to our training facility here in Abuja. Um, I'm sure this is going to be very fruitful and we hope you would apply all you've learned or you'll be learning here um, because of this one week in your various places. Thank you all for coming today. As Kingsley said, I am certain it's going to be a wonderful, very enlightening week of training and we really appreciate that you've taken your time out of your busy weeks and days to come here. Beginning in earnest, journalists interact with trainers from the U.S. African Regional Services in Paris via video conferencing technology. While these participants lay out their questions and expectations for the course, trainers were poised to equip them to better seek truth, articulate truth, and hold administrators accountable to the public. Ajuri Engelali, Channels Television News. The House of Representatives has opened an investigation into the implementation of projects planned by the Universal Basic Education in states that have been given counterpart funding by the federal government. The chairman of the House Committee on Basic Education and Services, who led his team round facilities in Akwaibom and River States, explained that more still needs to be done. The House of Representatives team for basic education arrives at the complex of the State Universal Basic Education Board in Uyo, the Akwaibom State Capital. The performance of the state has been put at average, but they are here to see what has been done. The Secretary to the State Government gives his report. That were you are having to leave it to the On inspection of some facilities, the observers are not completely satisfied. The only thing that is a recurring decimal is the case of the furniture. And we have looked at a wood. It's one of the things that we include in our report and say, okay, one of the things that we're going forward we should do is to ensure that the component parts of the contract. Uh, a furniture is, is very key because all that we have gone to that has been very constant. The chairman of the State Universal Basic Education Board believes more funding is needed for the sector. We have many structures being renovated and constructed and uh, based on the provisions and the guidelines for UBIC um, counterpart funding, what is provided for furniture is just 8% 
of the total amount. So what is available is not enough for the structures, the massive renovation and construction here. Over in River State, the committee chairman encourages the state governor to make his schools a reference point for other states. Governor Wike explains that counterpart funding was obtained only a short time ago, but he plans to put it to good use. We are flagging up the total administration of 174 of the primary schools in the in the state. When I was going around the unity schools, I discovered that none of the schools had a functional library. You then covers Gideon Secondary School. So I came on that and I said, well, they have to assess the fund for UBEC to fund library for the Gideon Secondary School. With the trip to River State, the committee brings to an end its inspection tour, which involved Aquaibum, Delta, and River States. Staying with education but elsewhere, the federal government says the proposed ICT university will be funded through a public-private partnership arrangement. Speaking when he received the report of the proposed university, the Minister of Communications, Mr. Adebayo Shitu, explained that the government is only providing the infrastructure for the institution, while the private sector will provide the finances for the running of the school. What the federal government is contributing are actually the buildings, the infrastructure in place. We are expecting, because I want to recall, sir, that when I first mooted this idea to the president, mm -hmm. The first question is, where are you going to get the money? I mean, that certainly assumes, and I think correctly, that the federal government has no money to start a new university. Mm -hmm. But we feel that with our brains, with our thinking, with our networking and so on, we should be able to utilize the funds of the private sector to run this university. So I want to believe that from inception, we must get this clear idea that the federal government is only going to be a part ownership, having contributed the infrastructure in place, and then we expect the you know our ICT companies worldwide to come in with their technology, come with it with their funding, and perhaps also faculty, you know, to you know collaborate, you know, to run this. So that is one area that we have to you know look at with regard to the law, you know, setting up this uh, university.